Hello, I'm Ross, and welcome to the Vibrant Earth Seed Farm. Um, today, we're going to talk about local adaption and land race breeding. Um, so, we, we grow seeds that will thrive in a multitude of environments, uh, but specifically in challenging environments that have cold nights and hot days and a short growing season. This video is for educational purposes and may not be used in any form for other purposes. So if you have other questions and stuff, you can ask in the, in the comments or email us um, and we'll be doing more. Um, you can email us with suggestions for further videos. Um, so the most important things with uh, local adaption is that your plants survive and produce a crop. So, you know, we obviously need them to survive and then they also need to produce um, food for us. Otherwise, there's no point in growing them. So, um, and then we need them to survive under varying conditions each year and under varying production methods. So if we have a, a variety that grows well in a drought, very drought tolerant um, variety, uh, but we get a bunch of rain and it all dies, um, that's not really acceptable either. So we need, not only do we need um, varieties resistant to uh, extremes, one extreme, we need them to be able to survive in varying extremes and under varying uh, growing conditions. So some people might want to water, you know, once a week really deeply. Other people might want to water a little bit every day. Um, plants need to be able to grow uh, under varying conditions. Um, because gardeners have a lot of other things they're doing and um, they can't always treat the plants exactly the same um, one season to the next. Um, so diversity and adaptability um, plays a role in that. Um, if you have a very um, limited amount of genetics in a variety, um, then it might do well under one condition, but not under other conditions. Come here, Charlie. Come here. <laughs> um, so diversity within a population of seed allows it to thrive under, under many different conditions. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then the diversity is what makes it adaptable. So, you know, our seed or any diverse uh, seed lots, seed varieties, um, could be brought to many different locations on the earth um, or within a region and eventually they would be, be able to adapt to that uh, climate um, as long as some of them were able to survive. So, you know, a wider amount of diversity means a wider um, potential of where it could become adapted to. And then, you know, those traits stabilize over time. Um, another another um, thing we grow for um, with the varieties that we're, we're working with more long term is um, for uniqueness of color, uniqueness of shape, and um, a longer harvest window. So a lot of commercial varieties, you know, every tomato is going to look exactly the same. Um, they're going to have the same shape, same color, and they're all going to be ripe the same day or same week, and you're going to have to harvest them and bring them to market. Whereas um, for many backyard gardeners and small-scale um, farm-to-market um, farms, 
um, if you can have more diversity in your harvest than, you know, maybe one customer at farmer's market wants, you know, one size of squash and another one wants a little bit larger or the different colors add to um, some of the desirability um, at market or on your plate. And then the longer harvesting window, instead of them all, all ripening at the exact same time, um, we have, you know, a longer period to can, can vegetables or we have tomatoes every day for many months rather than having too many um, for a short period of time. So um, uniqueness and variation within a variety, um, you know, to, to an extent is, is really, really helpful. Um, and so with our varieties, we, we talk about, you know, how diverse they are, whether they're, you know, more experimental and more of a, of a breeding project or closer to a stable, more uniform variety. And, um, you know, anywhere in between um, that's within that spectrum, um, you can choose different varieties for different purposes on your farm or garden. Um, the other really important uh, piece of, you know, plant breeding is uh, pest resistance. So as gardeners that live on our farm and eat our own food, we don't, we don't put any pesticides on our crops. Um, and even if you were to use, you know, organic pesticides or, you know, various different control methods, ideally, um, because we really don't use, we don't even use any, um, you know, cayenne soaps or anything um, up to this this date in our farm. You know, we, we really want to grow vegetables that can thrive on their own with minimal um, intervention by the farmer. So, um, when you have more diversity within a population, um, you have more potential for finding individuals or a portion of the population that is resistant to your pests. Um, you know, whether that be uh, insects or other diseases, you know, funguses or things. Um, so the more diversity you have, the more chance you have of getting a crop even under harsh conditions of insect pressures or um, fungus due to um, different weather conditions. Um, and then another trait that we select for in breeding is for long storage. So, you know, for our squash specifically, um, we, instead of cutting them all open right when it's, you know, when we're able to harvest them um, and getting all the seeds out, we like to let them sit and cut them open as they, um, as they start to show signs of needing to be used. Um, and so by doing that, we can select for the ones that last the longest in storage and use those primarily as the upcoming um, breeding stock for future years. Um, so many of our varieties are, you know, time-tested named varieties that are, are fairly uniform and um, come here, dogs. Come here. And dependable in those ways. Um, <laughs> But we also, we also focus in more land-based varieties, which um, a loose definition of a land race is a larger population, um, typically more farm scale rather than um, home garden scale. Uh, it could be, you know, similar to an heirloom variety, but more on a farm scale where you're growing out hundreds and hundreds of, of individuals rather than just, you know, five or six for a home garden. 
And so the benefits of a land race are that there's much more, um, much more individuals and diversity to then make selection um, and decide what what direction you want um, a crop to to go as far as local adaption. So a land race um, compared to an heirloom variety, a land race has a greater potential to be brought to a new environment and over a number of years um, start to adapt and thrive to that new location. Um, so you know, instead of just having a small amount of individuals where you're selecting the best fruits and, um, you know, they might be the tastiest, but then multiple generations down the line, they might not be as disease resistant or, um, you know, they're, when you select a smaller number of individuals, you're inadvertently taking away some of the, um, the beneficial traits that you might not know are beneficial. Um, whether that be, yeah, if you're selecting for flavor, you, you may inadvertently select against um, disease tolerance or um, drought tolerance or, or any, any number of traits that could be beneficial in the long term. So, you know, heirlooms are fantastic for, you know, growing food in the home garden and this year and um, you know if you're not going to be saving seeds then it's not it, you know even hybrids if you're not saving seeds there's they can have their uses as well um, but if we're if we're wanting to be an active participant in the preservation and the ongoing um, development and evolution of our own um, collective seed heritage, then land races have amazing capacity for us to um, be participants in that in that process. So that said, um, you know, and really with with any seed saving in general, but with with land races and more diverse populations. Um, uh, selection is a little more or is is more important um, when picking which individuals to save from so with an heirloom variety or with a small garden you know you might um, you might need to save all the seeds you know so if if you have a small garden and you only have five squash and you want to save seeds from those you know unless there's a a particularly um, annoying trait that you want to get rid of that's unacceptable in your population. You know, if there isn't that and everything's, you know, acceptable, but you have ones that you really like and ones that are, you know, acceptable. If you only have five individuals, you should save seeds from all those and take your time over a number of years to, um, to try to select if you if you do need to. Um, whereas if, if you grow a larger amount of individuals, you know, which isn't possible for everybody, but you know, this is kind of speaking to how we breed on our farm. Um, you know, if you have a hundred individuals of a squash or, you know, hundreds of lettuce varieties, if there's a trait that you really don't like, you know, you can just pull it out before it spreads pollen or if the fruit doesn't taste you know the same as the other ones and it's something that you don't like then you just don't save seeds from those um, those fruits or if you have a squash you know all of them store really well but you have a few that don't store so well you know um, if you have enough then you just don't don't save seeds from those. You can bake them into you know tasty snacks or something instead. Um, so yeah, you know it's it's important that we consider being a part 
of the evolution of these food crops. Not everybody has um, the space, the time, the intellectual interest um, to breed vegetables or to select them or to even save seeds. You know, not everybody needs to be a seed saver, but if you have the interest, um, then getting getting to know and researching a little more about plant breeding and land races and selection um, can help us to maintain um, amazing varieties that already are are in you know our collection and other seed growers collections and to create new varieties and to refine the varieties we already have um, to have you know a thriving agricultural system based on local and you know durable seed that has good flavor and that's appropriate for all of our needs so thank you so much and um, you know once again leave any questions and suggestions for future videos and we'll see you soon